So then, vertical or horizontal for 40 meters portable? Which one's better? Well, the textbooks tell us, of course, that horizontally polarized antennas do better uh, at 40 meters portable during the day. Let's have a look. Now, theory tells us that for an antenna to work well during the day on 40 meters, it needs to send its RF up at a pretty sharp angle. So we're looking at sort of Envis friendly antennas, if you like. And sort of angles of around 70, 80 degrees takeoff have been cited as being the ones to sort of chase for, really. So we're looking at an Envis friendly antenna. Uh, with that in mind, if we look at modelling, for example, uh, if you look at this far field plot here where we have the horizontally polarised sort of dipole, inverted V dipole, not very high, maybe about five, four or five metres off the ground in its apex, that's the red trace. You can see it projects its RF, RF up even at a very much higher angle than the vertical one, the one in blue, for example, a typical quarter wave vertical there. And typically we're aiming for those particular sort of uh, angles of, say, 70, 80 degrees for our uh, RF to go up and back down at a particularly short distance. So uh, let's put the theory to the test. I set up two antennas, which I'll show you in a minute. One was horizontally polarized for 40 meters, and one was a vertical quarter wave for 40 meters. And we managed to compare the performance of those two antennas during a time when 40 meters was really open very well indeed for short hop contacts around the UK and Northern Europe. Let's take a look at the setup. So over here, directly into the sun, I do apologize, is a quarter wave vertical for 40 meters. That's MacGyvered there. We've got the driven element going up right up the pole and radial plate and coax. Oops, nice choke there. And the coax runs all the way to car over there. The other antenna, which is the inverted V N-fed half wave, made by Marty, Mad Dog, Mad Dog Calls fame. This is the Mad Dog Mutt, serves me very well. And there's the feed point down there. So uh, the coax is about 7 meters, 24, 25 feet, whatever it is, of uh, Hyperflex 10, LMR 400 equivalent, and then about another 17 feet of RG58. So we will factor that in. We've got an SWR roughly of about two to one for uh, for both uh, antennas. So we're going to work out the differential in loss and um, we're going to factor that into the results. So let's have a look. So here's the SWR at the radio end for the NFED half wave. And here it is for the vertical. And what I did during the day was to make about 50 contacts use an AB uh, test using an antenna switch to check the receive and transmit of these two antennas. Okay, okay. vertical quarter wave, vertical quarter wave. And now back to the end fed, any change? Uh, no, I, all I heard you say was back to the end fed. I didn't hear anything prior to that. After, I, after I'd said ch uh, try again, I didn't hear anything. Absolutely nothing, nothing on the scope either. Over. So just down the coast, you Richard in Southampton. Five and nine, and a bit. Vertical. Vertical. And in the noise with the vertical. Vertical. Uh, two, zero, eight. Did we turn in names, John? Vertical. Uh, and I mean, did you hear me on the vertical, John? I could just about hear you, but there's, there's a station moved up pretty close. Vertical. And, uh, very clear, but it's just right for the okay. five nine plus ten. And you're about five and three on the vertical. 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 Tim in, uh, in West Sussex and good evening to you Matt. I'll give you a report on your next over. Go ahead. Okie dokie Tim. You're 5 and 9 plus 20 with me on that one. I'm really on the other one you're about 5 and 7 Tim. That's you. Three, two, sorry. Two. Vertical. 
opportunity to come back to the bomb. The other one was a bit tinny. Still a good signal. Um, still five and nine. Uh, I, I would say on this one, five and nine plus twenty. You give me a signal. Vertical. Five, no problem at all. Um, could you do me the favor? Audio that you're a, a nine, nearly a plus twenty on the antenna that you're on at the moment. But I was listening to you earlier on the other antenna, and you virtually disappeared. Roger, Roger, thank you very much, Tim. Yeah, you're That's cool. Down here into That's cool. 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 That
So this particular graph, as we can see here, first of all, shows the performance of the NFED halfway versus the vertical for stations uh, who, are, who spoke to me during the evening and their signal reports to me. So basically, what they, how strong they were coming in to me, how strongly I received them. Now, on the left-hand side, the vertical axis shows the uh, signal reports. Now, bearing in mind that S9 is basically, could be S9 or S9 plus. I haven't really, really differentiated there. So if it's showing as S9 on the graph, they're either S9 or S9 plus, whatever, okay? On the right, on the bottom, I should say, as we go along the bottom towards the right, we can see the distance increasing there. Now, again, if we look at the red box, that's less than 150 miles. The, uh, the blue line, the NFED half wave, is basically mostly showing S9, S9 plus, uh, whereas the vertical around S5 to S7. Uh, as we go towards 200 miles or more, that's the green box. The blue line is largely the same. Again, that's the NFED half wave. And the, uh, the orange line for the uh, vertical is slightly higher, around S7 to S8. Again, same graph, but this time looking at transmit. These were the signal reports that I was given by stations who spoke to me. This is how strong I was to them. Very similar again. Look, the blue line for the NFED half wave, mostly S9, S9 plus. The orange line for vertical, again, gets better as we go longer in distance. By the time we get to about 250 miles, there are fewer signals uh, at S8 or below. So uh, again, as the uh, as the, the clips there seem to demonstrate, not always, but most of the time, once you go beyond 250 miles or so, the vertical begins to become pretty competitive with the NFED half wave. Now, within the UK, of course, depending on where you are, if, for example, you're in the Midlands, then basically everybody within the UK is probably within a couple of hundred miles of you, mostly. With me in the in the south coast of England, it's strange, it's different for me because the stations are up in the sort of north part of Scotland. They're 300 odd miles away, and they were the ones who tended to, and the ones in the, in the sort of the northeast of England, they're the ones who tended to report the fact that the signals weren't that much different between the vertical and the NFED halfway. Anyone within 150, 200 miles of me really was all saying that the NFED halfway was much stronger. So conclusions, well up to 200, maybe 300 miles, the horizontally polarized antenna, whether it's a dipole or low inverted V dipole or a low inverted V sort of NFED half wave, they will win. I mean, they will probably win most if not all of the time up to that sort of range. Uh, the nearer you get, or nearer you are, I should say, to the other station, the stronger you'll both be to each other comparatively on the horizontally polarized antenna than you would be on the vertically polarized antenna. A couple of things I'd like to take forward with this. Firstly, I wonder if it's possible if we can compare the uh, horizontally polarized antenna, again, in the same sort of situation, running 5 watts versus 100 watts for the vertical. That would be an interesting comparison in the real world. Secondly, what I will say is that when 40 meters opens, it opens properly. When it's really fully open for inter-G, as we call it in the UK, then it'll open fully. And with a vertical, hell, with a hamstick, you know, an 8 foot long, mobile whip on 40 meters, you'll work plenty of stations. So it isn't to say the vertical is entirely useless uh, for daytime contacts. However, if you have the space when working portable, and that's where the vertical does have its plus side because you need less space. But if you have the space when working portable and you can put up some form of either sloper or, in, or maybe inverted V antenna, full size antenna for 40 meters, then if you're looking for those stations within the UK, say up to 200, 250 miles away, then quite clearly that particular antenna will be a better bet for you than certainly a full size and especially a sort of small loaded vertical you might want to use for 40 meters for daytime 40 meter operation. One other thing, one other thing to take from this is I'd love to be able to compare these two antennas due in the evening or well into the night when 40 meters really opens from here to sort of the east coast of the US and maybe beyond. It'll be interesting to see whether that differential we see for up to 200 miles is replicated for distances above, say, three to 4,000 miles off five, 6,000 kilometers. Just wonder whether that would be the same or whether the dipole or NFED half wave as an inverted V might just push the vertical closer than we think. Interesting. Maybe you've got some experiences of using these two types of antennas in the past and can vouch for one or the other, or maybe you're still on the fence. Let me know in the comments below. Either way, if you fancy joining a board and click, clicking subscribe even, it'd be good to hear from you. Thanks for watching, 73, and we'll catch you again for another one. All the best.